Hello. Okay, it's time for spelling. And this is level D, lesson three. And so I'm going to read you the story for spelling, and then we're going to do our dictation. So just listen along while I read the story. This is called Connected to the Current. Where's Papa? Tony Vanetti watched the gray clouds boil in the darkening sky. He said he was going to come and get me at six. Maria Vanetti sat down beside her son on the porch, swinging and pushed, and pushed it into motion with her bare toes. Tony, Papa could be here any minute. He may have gotten caught in traffic or had a late meeting at work. He promised he'd come over and help me with my electricity project last week, and he never did. My teacher says it has to be finished by... A bright streak of lightning lit up the black clouds, followed immediately by a deafening roar. Wednesday, Tony yelled. Nature is providing you with your own personal electrical display. Wasn't that spectacular? Mom wrapped an arm around Tony and squeezed. I guess I could tie a key to a string of my kite and fly it up into those clouds like Benjamin Franklin did. He proved lightning was an electrical charge. Tony stood up and walked to the door of the duplex. That could be my project. And I wouldn't need Papa. You will do no such thing, Antonio Marcus Vanetti. Benjamin Franklin was lucky doing that experiment. He could have been electrocuted. If the string had been wetter or his kite had flown into the heart of the storm. You mean like died? Tony watched another streak of lightning zigzag across the horizon. Mama waited until the deep rumble subsided. Yes, like died, Benjamin. Oh, yes, like died. Benjamin Franklin knocked himself unconscious a couple of times while he experimented with electricity. No one had found use for it yet. It was just a fascinating thing to feel the experiment within Ben Franklin's days. It wasn't until Thomas Edison came along and invented the electric light bulb that electricity became a necessity for every American household. Well, Papa needs to get over here and help me build my parallel circuit and my series circuit, he said. Is, he said, he, oh, he said he has everything we need. Tony frowned and looked down at the toes of his shoes. I hope your papa comes, Tonio, Mama said softly. But if he doesn't, I'll help you. Thanks, Mama, Tony smiled half-heartedly and went outside just as another dramatic display of lightning lit up the sky. He, popped, he plopped down on his bed in the darkened room and tossed his soccer ball pillow idly into the air. A flash of lightning lit up the dark room long enough for him to read the numbers on his clock. Papa, uh, Papa's always late. I bet he won't even come. He makes me so mad. He doesn't even care about his own son, Tony thought. Well, maybe his other son, Cutter. Papa always has time for Cutter. His wife, Marilee, is going to have another baby, too. I never get to see, I'll never get to see Papa then. He reached over and turned on the lamp beside his bed and noticed his Bible. It had kids on the cover playing soccer. Grandma Miller had gotten it for him at Christmas. He picked it up slowly and thumbed through the pages. He remembered what Grandma had said. Read it, Tony. It will teach you about the most important things in life. Mrs. Burton said, Jesus will always be our friend, thought Tony. She said... We we would, blah, 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 blah. he said he would send the comforter. The verse we studied last week was from John 1. Thank John in the New Testament. This week's verse comes from John 2. John also, not John 2. Tony found the book of John and looked at all the pictures before reading the introduction and the devotional on the first page. Tony jumped when Mama came in a little later and flipped on the overhead light. Phone for you, Tonio. Tonio put a marker in his Bible and headed for the phone. Hello? Yes? Are you okay? Is it back on yet? 
Do you have to stay? But it's due Wednesday. Mama will help me. No, no. Go to Cutter's program. Tony hung up the phone and headed back to his bedroom. He isn't coming, is he? Mama sat down beside Tony on the edge of his bed. No. Cutter has some program tomorrow, blah, blah, tomorrow night, so he couldn't come tomorrow. Tony nudged his soccer ball with the toe of his shoe. Cutter, Cutter, Cutter. What about tonight? Mama gently rubbed her hand up and down Tony's back. Your papa's, your papa was going to come tonight. Tony rested his elbows on his knees and ran his fingers slowly through his dark hair. The building Papa works in was hit by lightning. It blew something and they don't have any electricity. It messed up their phones too. Papa had to use his cell phone to call me. He has to stay there while the phone people come to work on the phones and the electric company tries to figure out why they don't have any power. Oh, I see. Mama, I don't get it. Tears started to puddle in the corner of Tony's eyes. Why does Papa keep promising to go to cut? Why does Papa keep his promises to go to Cutter's program and not keep his promises to help me with my electricity experiments? Mama handed Tony a tissue before she answered, "Tonio, your Papa doesn't always make the best choices. He knows Marilee and Cutter will be very upset if he doesn't come to the program. Papa has to live with them, and he doesn't like to see them angry and agitated." So he usually chooses the path of past the path of least resistance. You mean like electrical current? Good analogy. He usually chooses the easiest path, just like electrical current does. He doesn't have to see the disappointment on your face. One quick phone call takes care of us. I'm sorry you're hurting. Tony, I can assure you, your papa loves you very much. In many ways, he's not showing maturity. A mature person makes the right choice, even if it's hard. A grown-up should know not to procrastinate and put things off till the last minute. But now he will hurt one of his sons, no matter what he does. It was a difficult conversation, and Mama paused to word her thoughts carefully. Your papa is not trying to hurt you. He just needs to get his priorities straight. I'm trying to learn not to expect Papa to do things for you, so I won't get mad when he disappoints us again. And then when he does do something special for you, I can be happily surprised. He needs to make Jesus his special friend. I think that's the only thing that will help him. The choices he's making are like the clouds in this thunderstorm. They're making his life dark and unpredictable. Mama gave her boy another squeeze. Let's see what supplies we have and then go to the store and get what we need for your experiments. Tony wiped his eyes and followed Mama into the utility room. A couple hours later, Tony was lying on his back looking at the ceiling. The house was dark. Mama came in and sat down at the edge of his bed. A flash of lightning lit up the room, but only a distant rumble followed. Mama tucked the sheet up under Tony's chin and brushed the hair off his forehead. She reached over and flipped the switch on the lamp. Nothing happened. The electricity's off. Oh, the electricity's off, Tony murmured. So it is, Mama smiled in the darkness. Mama? Yes, Tony. I was reading the Bible while I waited for Papa. Tony rolled over and looked out the window beside his bed. Oh, that's a good choice, son. I was looking for the verse where we were learning this week in spelling. It says, eternal life is in him, and this life gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. I found it in John. That's a good verse to remember, Tonio. I'm glad you've memorized it. You know, God is the source of light in our lives, like electrical current is to the lights in the parallel circuit we worked on tonight. We can unscrew any of the three light bulbs and the other two will still shine because they are connected to the electric circuit current. But the bulb that is unscrewed breaks contact with the circuit and it no longer shines. 
and the other two bulbs of the parallel circuit will shine because their electrical current isn't broken, Tony added. The light of God's life shines through our darkest times, Tony. Mama slowly rubbed Tony's back, just like the, just like the verse you learned. The darkness can't put out the light. Only we can when we disconnect ourselves from the power source. Keep reading your Bible and praying. It will teach you how to live forever. It was quite a few minutes as Tony relaxed. Oh, it was a, it was quiet for a few minutes as Tony relaxed and Mama was alone with her own thoughts. I'm glad God is not like the series circuit we made. She smiled to herself. Tony, she whispered. When she got no response, Mama gazed at her precious son sleeping peacefully in the darkness. I'm so glad he knows Jesus, she thought. Then, smiling, she tiptoed out of Tony's room. Okay. All right. So now it's time for dictation. Turn to page 21 in your spelling packet. I'm going to read the three sentences. I'm going to read each sentence three times. So get ready to start writing on number one. The first word starts with a capital D. So you can get ready. Here we go. Dad did a couple of things instead. Dad did a couple of things instead. Dad did a couple of things instead. And don't forget the punctuation. Okay, number two starts with a cap. Blah, blah, blah. Starts with a capital H. He had to measure when he built this. He had to measure when he built this. He had to measure when he built this. Okay, number three. Here we go. You ready? Starts with a capital T. Trust God for comfort in all your trouble. Trust God for comfort in all your trouble. Trust God for comfort in all your trouble. Don't forget the punctuation. Okay, now you can do the proofreading on your own below that so all right thank you for listening